Hey, what's up? Damn it. Alright, what's up? Uh, this is- I'm gonna do effects tutorial. Because I- I have to do this because I don't want to- This isn't an act of laziness, but this is an act of- I expect people to know what they're doing. So, I'm gonna do an effects tutorial, and then the people who know how to do effects can apply this to the magic tutorial that I'm gonna make later. So, for now, we're just gonna do effects. I'll talk about particles, meshes, all that stuff. And, uh, let's begin. So, personally, I like to put my effects on the client. The client controls all effects, but they won't... They'll control the effects, but they won't create them. So, in the workspace, I like to have a folder called effects. I, no I normally do that. Because that's where I add all my effects. And what we're gonna do... In the local script, we're gonna do workspace, effects child added connect function and then we'll just put child the child dot name we'll begin with particle effects so child dot name is particle emitter well let's call it particle effects then all right so now we're gonna make our quick particle effect um here we have a part right, whatever size you want can collide invisible can collide should be off should be anchored of course and then we're going to do the attachment. The attachment is basically the center of it all. So it doesn't feel ever like offset or just particle spawn somewhere random. That would suck. So we have this. And then here, what we're going to do is maybe like a small explosion. So like we'll start big and it'll go small. For like a second. Uh, no speed. Or actually, yes, speed. 360, 360. Yeah, this light and light because you know people like light who doesn't uh, okay we'll make it like x 0.5 and let's do like 10 15 maybe okay so this is kind of what we have right now if you want to make it like a bigger explosion you can do 0 0.25 and then do like 25 speed and i guess it doesn't look like anything special but the way we're going to use it it'll look kind of neat so, you may see this and just be like, that's stupid, it looks bad. I agree with you. But, we don't need to work on anything serious. Now, let's say you wanted to add a second one. But, like, the second one is maybe, like, an after effect, like dust. So, let's make this one, like, too, like, slow. Let's make it, like, transparent as well. Maybe change its color a bit. You know what? Good enough. So what we're gonna do with this is now we are going to disable both of these. Like grab the part. We're gonna put it in server storage because you know the studio's kind of been filled up with stuff. I'm gonna this won't be here when you look in the studio. I'm gonna call this particle effects. And now this is called particle effects, it's called particle effects. If you clone it, you could just rename it, really. It's up to you. So in here, what we're going to want to do is... Now that we have two in here... If, if you only had one, you probably won't have to do this. But since we have two, we're going to do... For I, comma, being pairs. Child, dot, attachment. Dot, children, or, colon, children, do. If V, dot, class, name, is equal to particle emitter. Then... Now, most people will probably do v enabled equals true, and then like wait, and then v enabled equals false. I see that a lot. But what you can actually do is v emit 15, I guess, 20. What emit does is it creates that certain amount of particles from that part in an instantaneous moment, second. So we have this now. We can leave this here. This is in the starter player scripts. Because, you know, if you put it in starter pack or like starter UI, it's going to get disappear unless you have like a not remove on reset. We'll call this client effects, I guess. Okay, so now on the server side, what we're going to want to do is a script because you know the server has to make it and we'll just we'll just make it spawn an effect we'll do it in a loop so while wait i don't know like one two i expect you to know how to be able to apply these effects to 
any of your scripts. If you ask me that question, I will probably find you. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is like, a local effects is equal to game.server storage particle effects clone. We'll do effects that parent is equal to workspace that effects and then we'll do effects that C frame is equal to C frame that new and we'll do like 7.5 and while testing it should work it should appear on a screen it should just be up there doing its thing attachments not a valid member apart I did not spell that wrong it's just Roblox being Roblox at this point so what we're gonna do here is do <laughs> and child wait for child's attachment because you know that's fun as you can see it's creating a quick particle effect it's nothing special but it works and emit is practically instantaneous so it'll happen in like a spherical you know shape and that's particles. Fun. Um, what we're going to handle now is meshes. So, in the mesh department, what we're going to do is... Uh, let's just move this to the side for now. <coughs> like negative five. Now, in the mesh... Blah, in the mesh department, we're going to do... We're going to have a part again. Hello. And we're going to do... You know, just a typical thing. And here, we're going to put a special mesh. Now, depending on what you like, you can put a mesh ID in here, but I'm just going to use a sphere, because a sphere. And uh, we're going to call this mesh effects. Anchor it, can collide as false, put this in server storage, and now we're going to mess with it. So like down here, we're going to do else if child.name is equal to mesh effects, then, and I guess let's do and child, wait for child, because, you know, Roblox is fun. We all like this game. Um, mesh, we're gonna wait for that. And then what we're gonna do is, we are going to, why did I open that? We're gonna do tween server stuff, so have fun. So as tween service goes, let's just do a, so down here, let's begin. Let's do a local tween equals game get service service and then create now in there what we're gonna put is the object so child uh, mesh and then we're gonna do so it's supposed to be info and then goals so we'll create two tables up here so local info tween info new I spelled that wrong and then Typically, it's time, comma, the style, I like cubic personally, and then we'll do the direction, so, direction, preferably out, and then, that's practically all you really need, but you can also just do this, really, I, I actually forgot what these meant, I don't remember. Um, and then local goals is equal to. Now in here, what you want to do is the properties of the object. So what we're going to do is it's scale. So scale is equal to vector three dot new. Let's do like fifteen, you know, ten, ten, ten. Right, so that's our scale that it'll change to. And in the mesh effects, let's actually change this to like zero scale. Now let's create the mesh effect. So we can do local effects again. It won't mess with this because it's local. Fun. Or we changed the value at this point. So so game.server storage mesh effects clone effects.parent is equal to workspace.effects effects.cframe is equal to cframe.new. We'll do 5 this time, 7.5 as well. And then we'll just do the thing. I forgot to make the tween play. So let's try that again. There it is. Except I forgot to remove it. 
but just know it's 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 working <laughs> now we could probably just use this again really so what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this but this time we're gonna in fact get rid of the info we'll just keep the info um we're going to change this to transparency make it equal one and then we'll change this to just child so when this spawns, it should now just be a sphere that goes out, just like that. But now, people are probably thinking, well, what about custom meshes? How do we do that? I want to look, I want to have a cool thing like that. Well, you're in luck. I use custom meshes sometimes. Not really. So let's just grab, like, Stravance Lightning, I don't know. Cool, it doesn't exist. Um, let's just go to Stravent. We'll grab it real fast. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Stravent's Fire. My favorite gear. It's supposed to be Stravent's Lightning. Thanks. Okay, um, we'll go to Insert Object, Custom Mesh, Mesh Part. And we'll just apply this Mesh ID here. Alright, so we have this now. You're probably wondering, how do I do this? How do I make it expand or shrink or whatever I want to do? Unfortunately, if you're going to make it start from zero, it's going to look like this. You can't really do anything about that, but no one's going to notice anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Let's make it neon. Let's make it blue, I guess. Make it, yeah, okay. And then we'll call this custom mesh effects. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put the server storage. Again, now this has nothing in it. So we're actually going to be manipulating the entire part. So we're gonna do we're gonna copy this entire thing here. We'll do custom mesh effects. Not make it wait for or wait for child because nothing exists in it. And we can get rid of all of this, except let's keep the info up here. Now let's keep transparency is equal to one, but now we can just do size is equal to vector three. Not new. And we'll do like ten. And as tradition goes, you don't wanna touch your effects, you don't wanna sit on it. So can collide is false and anchored is true. And then in here, we're going to do the same thing as always. So let's get this out of the way. So let's see if I can see if I can now. Cool. This should not be on 5. This should be on 0. As you can see, it's doing its thing. So now we got mesh meshes, we got mesh part, and we got particles. Now let's say you want it to spin, I, I guess. I don't know. Um, for spinning, we could probably do something like... <sighs> we'll do a... I don't, I don't use... I, I, I surprisingly don't know core routines. So if you use core routines, good on you. Um... What you could do is, while child is equal to, or child parent is equal to workspace effects, then or do, dang it, and then we'll make it wait. Now you see, in fact, I am not showing this to you because I want you to use it. Don't use this. <laughs> if you're gonna make a spinny effect, I, it's kind of annoying. To do you could make it tween over and over and like spin you could make it spin once and just you know do its thing maybe you could make a second one and do a linear spin till it disappears um in this case this would not work because it'd be choppy and laggy especially because of weight you could argue and say use render step service or run service and make it heartbeat but that would in fact be really fast in certain fps rates and if you had like 20 fps this would barely spin at all so actually, what I'm going to show you to do is, I'm going to tell you about that linear tweening thing I was talking about. Linear because it'll look like as if it's still going to spin even when it's disappeared. And we're actually going to change the C-frame. So C-frame is equal to child.C-frame times C-frame.angles. And we're going to randomize it here just because. It's 90, 90. Math.rad would work here, but this has such a drastic change. 
no one's really gonna notice that you really did anything serious um, so linear all that got the child and now our Stravin's lightning mesh should spin this can be applied to anything because I mean anything works as you can see it spins so that's cool uh, maybe let's like Let's do like three of these at once. I'm just kind of showing you. Now, let's say you wanted three of these to pop out at once. You do this. Uh, let's do this. That's number four. I am not good at math. What am I saying? I script. If I sound very uninterested, because I am, I I just feel like this is one of those things that doesn't have to be explained. But I am. As you can see, it's kind of like, oh, that's that's neat. Um, Tweeny service works. Anyway, you could make this even like change color midway. You can make it like dark blue as it goes out. This works for particles, this works for anything. Now here's the problem with, you know, this kind of stuff. When your camera's really close. As you can see, my frame rates are dropping. So, mesh parts are a big gamble. But that's also because I haven't introduced you to something. You should always make sure to delete your effects, or else See how the lag is just building and building, and it's getting worse and worse. It's, oh god. That's not what we want. So always, always, always make sure to remove them after a certain point. Our effects last for one second, so we're actually going to do this. What this does, it'll get rid of it after a second, after a period of time. It won't pause the script at all, so it's pretty handy. And this will also help, you know... It helps. So now, when you put your camera in it, the effects is, the FPS is fine because these are getting destroyed after they're created. Now, as you notice, these particles are, you know, I, these last longer than a second, so of course they're disappearing. But, it is working. So, they refresh after they disappear. And this is a good way to minimize the amount of lag from your effects. I've made this mistake in the past, I forgot to get rid of these and my games lag like hell. I was like, I don't get it, why is it so laggy? I am a good scripter. But I didn't realize that leaving it there would cause that effect. And that's really it. This is mainly for explosion effects since that's what most people do. But you could really do anything here, like what if... It's, it's your world man, it's like whatever you want to do. Let's say for the scale. I made like a sword slash effect, so instead I had like one. So now, uh, on the sphere effect, it, it's it's just all up to your optimization and how you want to use it. So like now this sphere should be like a big cylinder thing. I, maybe I should have made that skinnier, but like I think you kind of get the gist of what I was going for. So that's about it. I didn't. This wasn't going to be anything serious. It was something pretty simple. And if I rushed through it, sorry, but I feel like the people who know what they're doing would be able to pick up, pick this up pretty fast. So uh, that's about it, really. And I think you already know how to do positioning, like when something hits something or all that jazz. So, yep, that's it. See ya.